Doctor, one of the other questions I wanted to ask you about is some news over the weekend. And we talked about this about a week ago when we were discussing um, COVID and its relationship with children. There was a report over the weekend that three children uh, passed away from what they're calling a mysterious coronavirus illness. Uh, we've talked about it before. Looks like Kawasaki disease. But do we know any more about this? We really don't. And, and the difficulty here is we don't know the denominator. So it's not that uncommon um, to see certain viruses lead to certain post-viral conditions or syndromes. We know Coxsackie can do it. We know flu can do it. These are tragic cases. Um, there's been several dozen reported. What we don't know is how many kids have actually had coronavirus infection, either were asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic and cleared the infection. And then what we're seeing is some kind of post-viral condition. Um, is it hundreds of thousands or millions of kids or is it dozens of kids? And this is a very concerning trend because it's a big numerator on a small denominator. There was a good study in science about two weeks ago that said that children are about a third as susceptible to the infection as someone aged 14 to 65. And so what the study found is that kids are probably getting infected, but at a much lower rate because they're not as susceptible for reasons we don't fully understand. But it would suggest that there probably are more kids infected than what we presume right now. The literature on this is mixed. There's studies on both sides of this debate that people can cling to. There's going to be a more definitive study of about 6,000 people that the NIH just started that's probably going to give us a definitive answer about just what percentage of kids are getting coronavirus. But that's going to help inform just how, concerning we sh how concerned we should right. be about these cases. Now, of course, we're concerned about it, but we need to understand what, at what rate are these these cases occurring. Doctor, though, the question, of course, is for parents who, who as you might imagine, are skittish uh, by default about their children as the summer approaches. And so many of them, in some cases, may be going to camp. Some camps seem to be opening. And the importance of camp opening is important for the economy insofar as that it might allow uh, some parents who might otherwise either be forced to work at home or not be able to work to work. Um, and so what would you be advising those parents right now? Well, look, I think there was, there was a point weeks ago, months ago, when people were perhaps in the media a little bit cavalier about the risk to kids because there was a perception that kids just weren't getting coronavirus. It wasn't affecting them. We didn't see any deaths among kids. I think what we're learning now is that kids probably are getting infected. We don't know at what rate, but there's this now very concerning post-viral condition that a small percentage of kids are getting. So I think it, it ups the, uh, the risk here. I think it, it needs to make us all more cautious about exposing kids to this infection um, if we can otherwise avoid it. Now, you're not going to be able to completely avoid it. Schools are probably going to open in the fall. Um, there's probably going to be continued spread. But I think in the interim, it's going to raise concerns about restarting camps and doing things where you're putting kids back into an environment where you could have large outbreaks until we understand better what this condition is and exactly what the rate is. It might be very small. I mean, we're probably looking at a situation between where between 10 and 20 million people in the United States probably have had this infection at this point. We're only diagnosing at most one in 10 infections. And so how many kids have had it? Is it a couple of million or is it just thousands? We need to understand that question.